don't want you to think of sex as just the old in and out penetration. That's not what it's all about. And that is the thing about the threesome. It's not about the orgasm per se. It's about the experience of sex. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. You're listening to Sex with Emily. I'm Dr. Emily, and I'm here to help you prioritize your pleasure and liberate the conversation around sex. In today's best of episode, I'm talking about the number one most common fantasy. Wait for it. Threesomes. I explore why threesomes can be hot and lay out some groundwork for making a threesome work. Along with my former producer, Jamie, we talk about everything you should discuss with your partner before adding a third into the mix. And... The importance of aftercare, you know, what happens after your threesome, that's important too. I also share my personal threesome experiences, both the satisfying one and the one that didn't go exactly as planned. I describe what steps you can take to try to maximize everyone's pleasure while indulging in this very popular fantasy. Plus, I also answer your questions about the hottest moves to try when penetration is off the table for a while, what to do when you've gotten too involved with your neighbor's 19-year-old son, you're going to like this one, and how to get the most out of masturbation using things like CBD, ethical porn, and fantasy. All right, intentions with Emily for each episode. Join me in setting an intention know when you set out what you want to get out of listening to this episode. I do it. I encourage you to do it while you're listening. My intention was to help you talk through and plan a successful threesome so you and your partners can enjoy the experience and enhance pleasure all around because that's what we're all about, right? Pleasure. We also have some new articles on the website. This one I love. It's an Ask Emily. How can my partner and I try face sitting? You can check that out at sexwithemily.com. And also, if you want to ask me questions, no problem. Just call my brand new hotline. It's 559-TALK-SEX or 559-825-5739. Leave me your questions there or just message me, sexwithemily.com slash askemily. All you got to do is include your name, your gender identity, location, age, and how you listen to the show. All right, everyone. Enjoy this episode. All right. So yeah, we every night we've been posting because we know you guys, some of you want to call in, but we notice that sometimes there's just a whole host of questions about the same thing. And recently it was threesome. So I thought it's a good time to brush up on your old threesome tips. There have been lots of studies. In fact, you know, our friend was on the show who wrote the book about fantasies. He did the scientific research, Justin Miller, and he said that the number one fantasy for men and women was actually... Have a threesome. Mm-hmm. Multiple, so, sex multiple, partners. multiple sex partners. Multiple. It could be more than three. It could be four. Because I'm a fan of the foursome. Emily is a fan of the foursome. Yeah. She is like trying to make it the new I thing. Just it's the new think trend. It's more fun for everyone. I like that. More it can fun be. Not for the everyone. awkward one in the corner filing your nails. So let's read this email. <laughs> yeah. So this one in particular came to us from Marty, who's 57 in Indiana. He writes, "Dear Emily." Wife and I have been married for 27 years. Mm. We watch threesome porn together and love it. We talk about having it, but I'm not sure if she wants to follow through. I'm really attracted to one of our good friends, but I'm not sure how to ask. What should I do? Ooh, okay. Marty, this is the perfect threesome one to start. We had to pick one. I'm glad we picked this right, one. Yeah. Okay, Marty. 27 years of marriage, amazing. I love that you're watching porn together. I often say that's a great way to test it out. Threesomes is something you want to tread lightly into that area. And it's not something you do to to fix a bad sex life. It's not something you do to bring yourself closer together. No, it's something you do when you are on super solid ground, which sounds like you're on solid ground because you're talking about, you said you've talked about it. However, here's where I need to guide you. 
you don't want to bring in the good friend. You don't want to mention right away, hey, babe, I'm thinking of having a threesome and how about our hot friend next door? That is not something that you want to do at all because your partner's going to be thinking that that's the only reason you're asking is because you want to be with the hot friend. Remember, mm-hmm. we don't hear anything mm-hmm. after that. Nope. Threesome and then you put a name in there. All we can think is that's why you're asking me. So you really, you really want to talk it all the way through with her. And since you're not sure, Marty, if she actually wants to follow through, you have to have the sex talk outside the bedroom and say, I know we've talked about this a lot, um, you know, through dirty talk and we've watched porn together and we've pictured it. I think we should talk about if it's something we actually would want to go through with. See what she says. Let her know what you think. Let her know that you think you'd be interested if she's interested. Because remember, this is when threesome conversations don't go well. And this has happened more times than I, I can even count. Yeah, we should have a threesome. I think your best friend would be hot, like Marty just said. I think this person would be hot. And that is never going to go well. You're not going to talk. You're not going to get your girlfriend to have a threesome. That's typically how it goes, is you're asking about your girlfriend. You're not going to get her there. But you can broach the conversation like, have you had any fantasies? Is it something you've been interested in? Have you thought about being with a third person with me here? Maybe they want to be with another man. It's not Mm -hmm. always with the woman. So that's how you start. You start unpacking it slowly together. And then once you decide okay, yeah, that would be interesting. Then you do some more dirty talking and role playing and you think, okay, well, how would it go down? What's off limits? What's on limits? You get to talk about boundaries. So some example boundaries are like, we don't want the person to sleep over. We definitely, you know, I don't want to see you kissing this person. I don't want to see any penetration. And, you know, you want to make sure that you both have aftercare with a threesome. So are you going to connect afterwards and and kind of talk it through and make sure you're both in a good space? It's really important, especially after this, to have aftercare because, you know, what if something went wrong and it didn't feel great to your partner? Now, the thing about this is when it goes right, it can be really hot for couples because they do it once, it goes well, they feel great, they set boundaries, and then you kind of have it as built-in sex talk for a while. You're like, remember that time when this was going down with that woman, she was going down on you, or that guy was, you know, doing that thing to you that was really hot, and then you kind of play it through, and you guys are always asking me for some, you know, sex talk advice. When you have really hot things happen in the relationship, they don't necessarily expire. I mean, I know couples who've had like one threesome, and they're like, oh my God, for years, that's all we talked about. So it doesn't have to be a lifestyle Think of it more like a relationship experience. And I have to say, though, you guys, it it is not for every couple. So I'm in no way saying because it's the top fantasies. And I can remind you again, there are two kinds of fantasies. Those are the ones we actually want to try. Like we really do. We want to make it happen. And those are the ones we just like to think about. We want to talk about it either with, you know, ourselves when we're alone or with our partner in bed. But it doesn't mean we want it to happen. So you have to figure that out with your partner. And also remember, you guys, I I do advise against the good friends. Even if they're a really good friend or like, you know, that they've slept with everyone. No, it takes the wrong turn. That person is still in your life. It gets messy. And I think that strangers are the better way to go. We had someone call in last night and they said they hired someone in Vegas, a prostitute or a call girl. I feel like that's like one of the best ways to do it because it's more. First of all, they're going to be able to know how it's going to go down. And it's their job. So they're going to want to do a good job. Right. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, here's the boundary. Yeah, first she said, well, you know, it was kind of weird because the woman, not weird, but she said, at first I didn't know if I'd be into it because we hired this woman and she came in and started talking about the boundaries and all the thing. And like, it just wasn't sexy. But then you kind of get into it. You realize, well, we're going to start kissing. We're going to start moving through this, you know, threesome thing. And it gets, it's exciting. And then you realize after that, I just want to connect with my partner. And then she leaves. It's a kind of a very clean transaction in that way. I also had a friend who did something here in uh, Los Angeles with her boyfriend. They were in town for her birthday and he found someone in LA to go over and play with them and give a massage. And she said the same thing. She said at first, I was like, really, this woman? But they're also professionals. So you have your experience. They leave and you guys get to keep the memories. Obviously, you want to use protection um, and you just want to make sure you talk it through. Now, The other questions that get asked often are, how do we find the third then? Or what if we can't go to Vegas where it's legal to do these things? FetLife is a great website. F-E-T-I-L-I-F-E. People are like in field. F-E-E-L-D. Tinder can work. There's also hashtag open, which is a dating app that could be another great way to find a third. Well, we'll put this all in the show notes at sexwithemily.com because that's what we do here. Everything we talk about, you can find there in the show notes. So 
I know you're dying to hear about. Well, Emily, what do you know about threesomes? I've had some experiences myself. And I can tell you about ones that went right and ones that went wrong. Let's start with one that went not so great. <sighs> okay. It wasn't horrible, but it was called, we like to call it the aborted threesome. We were in, I was away, I was in Mexico with a girlfriend for a week. All my crazy sick stories in Mexico. They really are. I know. <laughs> Love going to the Mexico. You gotta go to Mexico more often, just not well, that same place. No. Okay. So we were with a friend, we were, we were, I was with one of my best friends, and we had been on a kind of a, I want to say we've been on a threesome kick. This was a while ago. This was probably like 15 years ago now. And in the kick of like, we were, she had one and I had one. And so we're in Mexico. We met this guy and he was an American. We had mutual friends and we've been hanging out all week at this friend's hotel opening in Mexico. And we both thought he was really cute and we were flirty and we were hanging out. And we, nothing had happened so far, but it was like our last night and we had these beautiful rooms because we were there, it was our friend's place and we had like the nicest room in the hotel with like, it was like a suite. We had our own hot tub. I love the hot Ooh. tub. I know. We had like the big mirrors. We had a bed, a sun bed. We had our own, like our own area blocked off. Top of the whole hotel, the new grand place. I'm thinking this would be a good place to have some frisky fun this week. So it was the last night we'd both been flirting with him. We thought, well, let's have him over for a drink. See what happens. And then he came into the room and we're like hanging out. And we knew that we had not been with him, but you know, we're having a few drinks and, and he kind of, you know, playing music and it's a beautiful, warm Mexican evening. And we all start, he starts kissing. He's kissing me. He's kissing her. And then we move over into the bed. We still have our clothes on. And a very strange thing happened. We're lying in bed. We're starting to do this thing. And I'm just like, I have this feeling. And I think, I, I, I am not attracted to him at all in this way. Like my body, <laughs> I was like, I, I, I cannot, I, I will not. No, I thought I like was. You felt it in point, your core. In my core, because I, I can't fake anything. If I don't like you, you'll know. If I don't want to talk to you, you'll know. If I can't, yeah, if I'm at a party, I, I'm not a bullshit <laughs> small talker. You're really not. <laughs> I'm like, you'll know. And I was like, instantly, my body goes, no, no, no. And I'm pretty open, sexually. I can kind of get into a groove, as you know, make things happen. I was like, no. You, sexual, no. I know. <laughs> right? Right? And so I, I, I looked at my friend, I'm like, I looked at her and I said, I, I, you know, I, I can't. And she's like, and she shakes her head. She's like, I can't either. She's really in the same moment. We're like, because it was sort of a force. This would be, we were playing, we were almost like the couple mm -hmm. saying this would be really fun. And we were playing it up and we just said, no, we can't, we can't. And we were very honest with him. And we're like, you know, let's just hang out and go back downstairs and have another drink. So that's my board. We were very honest with him. It wasn't a horrible situation. How do I you just wasn't it? feeling it. He was totally fine with it. And then it became a joke and we're all friends. And then she actually did end up hooking up with him later that night. So everything oh. was fine. Not sexually, but in that moment, I was like, I can't do it. And I think- So did happened. you guys kind of have like this we had not, telepathic we little like eye contact, like abort, abort, abort? I was abort. like, abort mission, abort mission. Gotta go, abort, <laughs> abort, abort. So I'm like, no. And I don't know, had I had one yet? That might have been, yes, I had already had one. So let me tell you a story of a really good threesome. So that was like aborted, just in the sense of, I think I was honest about it. We were honest about it. I didn't, it wasn't necessarily something. He's a wonderful guy, but we all know about attraction. He didn't do anything weird. He didn't change. I just didn't feel the chemistry. Mm -hmm. I hadn't been that close to him. Yeah. And also it was my friend. So what I realized was, even though she's a very dear friend, in my handful of threesomes I've had, they were with people that I the guy I was close with, but the women were not close of mine. So I feel like in my experience I've had with women, they weren't like my best friend. They weren't someone, so I didn't find my friend even, attractive. Even with your friend. I don't find it, her attractive, either, like in a, that way. And it would, wouldn't it probably cause some kind of weirdness after? Like, I can just imagine. I'm thinking about my, one of my best friends who I'm actually very attracted to, but in, if it came down to us having a threesome, would I look at her differently? afterwards yeah right that's what i thought i thought i she is such a great friend we're like sisters i've known her for a long time that i don't think that would ruin our friendship but i just knew that like it was like a sister literally it was like that's not attractive so and he's not incestuous. i'm remembering <laughs> it now point. i hadn't really talked it through in a while but that's what happened so my one that went well was a guy that i was dating for a while in san francisco and it was kind of my open relationship experience and we really it was really for the time, it was great because we saw it. We had a very un great understanding of our relationship. We saw each other once a week 
for about a year or so. Mm -hmm. And we knew that we weren't looking for anything serious, but we really enjoyed each other's company. Like if he had something to go to, you know, I'd go with him. He'd come with me to my events. And it was, you know, we were dating other people and it it actually worked because we were really open and transparent. Well, one night he said to me, he said, there's this woman that I've been with before and she's never been with a woman before. And I thought about you and I'm like, and I hadn't had a ton of experience, but Mm -hmm. a few more than she had. You've dabbled. Dabbled. And I said, let's meet. He goes, and this was why I thought it was the best way because he said to me, no pressure, but why don't we all get a drink? Let's go get a drink and just see what happens. And if something happens then or another time, we'll feel it out. So we ended up going for a drink, the three of us. And I thought she was awesome. She was super cool. We had a great connection. And it wasn't even so much that I was like in that moment because I think that sexuality is fluid. And the mm-hmm. way I felt, I was like, do I want to just be friends with her? I just felt we had a great connection. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like, oh, I want to picture her going down to me in this moment. My mind doesn't work like that. I was yeah. feeling the energy between the three of us. We okay. were having a good time. And I was enjoying the the moment and the dinner. And then we took it back to his place. And he has a wonderful place. And um, perfect for that. Huge bed. Lots of like great yard, great food. He's always got a lot of snacks, music. He had it all going on. Fuzzy carpets and couches and things. And we went back and it ended up being this like really beautiful evening where we just kind of fell into it. He was, I, I had no hold on him. They had slept together before. You know me, I don't mm-hmm. I get ever the jealous thing. I just thought we're all going to have this flow. And it ended up being this, we were all very respectful for each other. I, we all know we had been with each other and it just for what it was a great because a great threesome is kind of like a dance in that way I could tell you that people have often called and asked for specific tips and I can give you that but this one was just like we were respectful we would like make out and then she would be a part of it and then I would be a part of them and we were up like all night and it was it was really a hot thing do and you then, think with threesomes it's easier for sex not to be as linear Absolutely. there's so many places to go. Yeah, well, that's, that's such a great thing because what we've been talking about, and if you guys learn anything on the show, and I hope there's many you're learning, is that we really do have a goal here that I don't want you to think of sex as just the old in and out penetration. That's not what it's all about. So yes, that's exactly what it is. It was this like, we would make out, and it wasn't even like we got right to the penetration. In fact, most of it was not about that at all. Most of it was more about just kissing and connection and like oral sex on everyone and definitely changing condoms when there was penetration just so you know if there's two women one man condom changes going in and out of each one but it was more like we would fool around then we would get snacks then we'd come back to the bed then we would like talk about things it was just a very comfortable situation that didn't have a lot of pressure or jealousy there was no expectations and yeah it went on for a long time because we weren't like and that is the thing about the threesome. It's not about the orgasm per se. It's about the experience of sex. So maybe that is good advice for you all who's in your twosomes. How would you make your, you can mix your sex life up by just mixing up the actual routine that you're doing. The making out, the kissing, the foreplay, the oral, like it can be around. You could do this for five minutes, do that. Bring out your massage candle, give each other a massage to get into the mood, play with different toys, go back to whatever kind of sex, intercourse. That sounds great. It was a good one. And we were all not attached in the way of like, it wasn't like it was a committed thing, but I'm telling you guys, I know it works. And initially we opened up talking about how it can work for couples too. And that's when you got to talk about all the boundaries and all those fun things. So you can actually make it happen. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break and we come back. We're going to get into your questions. We have Michelle, 35, in Wisconsin. She says she's got a polyp on her uterus and can't have sex for a month. So what other ways can her and her husband have sex? Hmm. Okay, good question. How you doing, Michelle? I'm here to help. You've come to the right place. Of course. Thank you. All right. So what else can you guys do besides, you're saying essentially besides penetrative sex? Right. I had the surgery already. It's been removed and I found out it's benign. So that's all good. But okay. I still can't have intercourse for the next month. So I was looking for, you know, some creative ideas to keep things spicy. Yeah. Um, you okay. Know, interesting. But, You've you come know, to the right place. I know that you're having this because you, you know, you're having a challenge right now. But for a lot of people, I, I encourage couples to look at sex as not just penetrative sex. So here's some things. First off is mutual masturbation. Have you guys ever done that? No. Okay, so mutual masturbation is actually a really hot way, which is why I love it. It's kind of a twofer. First of all, 
you get to like look at your partner getting themselves off, right? Like you look at your husband, you see how he's touching himself and it's, you see that he's having pleasure and then you're touching yourself and you know, you can out externally, right? So you can still touch yourself, your clitoris using a toy. And so it's hot, but also you're kind of learning too. It's education. You're like, I didn't realize that he put his hand up under his balls or, or, you know, that he touched himself in that way and he can see you and it's how you use it. Maybe he'll learn something new. So it's just hot and it's a sure thing because you know you're both going to get off. If you don't have a good clitoral vibrator yet, I'd get the Jeju Mimi Soft. I love the Mimi Soft. One of my first toys and I always have it with me when I travel and it's always charged by my bed. So that's really fun. Awesome. That's okay, awesome. another one is um, massage. So I'm a huge fan of massage. I believe I wish that every sex sexual encounter started with a little massage because we know we all get anxious in our daily life and you guys get like a massage candle which is really fun you can get a massage candle at good vibrations we have a store on our site where you can buy it but if you haven't used a massage candle you just light it and then you wait a few minutes and then you can pour the warm massage oil on your partner it turns from the candle to the massage oil and it's such a sexy thing to do to just sort of get in the mood for sex please each other just try out a candle. You will love it. So if you like, you could blindfold him, you could give him like a 10 minute massage. You could, you know, the fun thing about blindfolding too, is when you blindfold your partner, you take, when you take away one sense, all the other senses become more heightened. And then it's like, everything feels great. So like, he won't know what's coming. You can have some ice cubes by the bed or some warming lube or just play with like, you know, different things around the home, like a hairbrush and different, different textures and like sensory play. Or just massage them. So that is some fun. And then you could switch. And then he massages you. And then again, using using a vibrator, using toys together could be really fun and just playing. It's just really fun foreplay. And then you can end in, I think, all these. If you're not having penetrative sex, definitely end all of these in some masturbation. Um, it's also really fun to, to tease each other. Um, I think that teasing is kind of a lost art. You know what I'm saying, Michelle? Like, remember when you first met and you guys were like teasing and you were like... Be- took a while before taking each other's clothes off so maybe if you kind of put some of that there you're like you know what we can't even have sex we're just gonna like slow everything down maybe just like teasing over you know your clothes and over your underwear i think it's really fun to like leave your clothes on in these situations or maybe wearing some great fabric and then he's like touching your nipples through your clothes and you're massaging him too using different fabrics you know he's touching you over like this is just the whole slow sex movement which i like and seeing like how different fabrics feel on you and um some dry humping is fun what else do we like here lube oral sex Mm -hmm. oral sex is amazing too i mean yeah that goes without saying how do you like oral sex (laughs) <laughs> that don't, yeah, that's, that's like the only thing I could think of. <laughs> right. So I was like, you got that. You got oral sex. But that why not? Easy one, but I, I was, I was but, trying to be a little bit more creative. Well, I think um, I love the idea of massage. Like, do you like the idea of like blindfolding and playing? I mean, you could just use a blindfold in your house. I mean, you could just use a, a, a necktie. And it's really fun to kind of set the atmosphere and to like play with, again, all the senses. So you like you light a candle, you use some ice cubes, you just play around with each other. Um, you could also play some sex games. We've got some really fun games. Or if you live near um, like a local sex toy store, they have like fun card games. There's one called Monogamy like Monopoly, but it's monogamy. And, you know, you just get to know each other better. So I think use this time, which I think is kind of, you know, I hope you're not in any pain and it kind of sucks when you can't have sex. But I like the idea of let's have an exploratory month where we try new things. Maybe you start talking dirty, you role play, you know, you just, you just have some fun with it. So it's not like, oh God, we got to wait, but like, wow, we learned a lot this month. I didn't know how sensitive my nipples were because maybe he didn't play with your nipples for longer than five minutes. You know, so I think finding other paths to pleasure, maybe he loves when you kiss the back of his neck or you really slow down the blowjob, you know, when he's wearing a blindfold. We don't know yet. Oh, great. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thanks a lot. Hope you feel better. Thanks for calling. We got ideas for that. Mm -hmm. I wish sex was a little more, wasn't just all about the penetration myself. It's not even the best part. Not even the best part. It's not. Oral's the best part. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, girl, you got this. You got a month of oral, Michelle. Lucky. I like the idea also of them just trying new ways to, you know, different oral, like mix up your oral moves. Because she's like, oh yeah, I already thought of oral, but I want to do other things. But just remember that the way you've been doing oral with your partner 
maybe you have that formula and you know it works, but there's just there's so many other ways to 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 play with oral. Like maybe you have forgotten the balls. There was a while where I had some kind of post traumatic ball disorder. I was like, I think I'd hurt some guy's balls, and then I was like, stop touching them for a while, and then I was like, oh yeah, go back to the balls, play with them, massage the inner thighs, tease, you know, play with other parts of the body. Yeah, bring back the balls. We have Sonia, 45 in Texas. She's having sex with a younger man and she wants to know how to stop. Oh, hey, Sonia. Thanks for calling. Why do we need to stop? Hi, Emily. Hi. Well, I think it's I think it's turning into something of an obsession or an addiction on his part. Okay. I think it kind of might start to get unhealthy. Okay. Well, tell me what's going on. How old is he? And tell me the story. Okay. Okay, well, he's 19, and he lives down down my block, and he came home from college um, about mid-May, and he um, asked me if I would help him with the job interview, and I said, sure, come on over, and when he came over, because I've known him, you know, since he was a young, young boy, and um, he came over and basically said that, you know, he's had sex with a few girls in college, um, he just finished his freshman year in college he had had sex with a few girls and they just laid there like a like a you know a, right just fish they they laid there. They weren't <laughs> yeah and so he i'll never forget these words he told me um he said since i knew what sex was i knew i wanted to have it with you oh wow I since know. he knew what it and was so, since he was a little boy living down the lane i got it okay so. so I said no, I, and I turned him away, and I said no. I mean, I'm friends with his mom, and long story short, he wore me down, and this has been going on since mid-May, and I, I tell him not to come over, and he still shows up, mm. and the problem, Emily, is it's, it's, it's the best sex of my life. Um, it's, it's just unbelievable, but I, I think I need to, I think we need to stop. Well, tell me, okay, what makes it the best sex of your life? Well, he he can go for a long time, and um, you know most most I'm I'm single, and the guys I date are my age, and yeah, you know, it's it's just not the same. Yeah, I hear you. I know that. So it's going for a long time. Is there something in it about? I understand why it's, it's it just doesn't seem healthy. And so I, I but but is there something about going for? Is there something else in it that that is still still a little bit taboo that the mom doesn't know? Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, so he's 19 and you're 45, just to clarify. Okay. So, so I mean, honestly, I think you're right. I I think that's a really big age difference and it's something that you're going to have to, uh, get out of the situation. And I think it's part of the forbidden and he can go for a long time and it's so flattering too. Um, I think the best thing to do is just to be like, hold your ground and just let him know that like you really can't do it anymore and i hope you know i hope he's fine with it and nothing goes you know nothing goes wrong here but i feel like um you have to you have to be the strong one here because you really are the adult so you have to be adamant and you have to say i mean i mean honestly i'm hearing you i'm like your age i'm like i get it like that that's like hot i mean i haven't done that 19 year old but like i think that you have to be the adult and just let him know and not leave anything open you've had your fun since may it's been a good two months but it sounds like, I mean, how long is he home? Is he next to home all summer? Yeah. I just, I feel like, and because you, you're calling me saying it's becoming an obsession on his part, but you don't really want it to end. So tell me about some of the obsessive behavior that you're saying go away and he comes in. Is there anything else? Do we need to worry about his mental health at all? No, I don't think so. He, you know, he just, he texts me and says, you know, he wants to come over and I tell him not to. And next thing I know, he's knocking at my back door and, um, uh, I just, I'm even afraid to, you know, I'm, I, I'm dating and, and I'm afraid to have any voter over at my house because he just might show up. And so well, this makes me nervous. I think that you have to tell him that you're seeing somebody out and this is going to be, I mean, he's not, here's the thing about young boys. You might be the first love, the best sex he's had. He's only been with young women and we've seen some of these things not go very well. So I feel like, yeah. um, I, I don't know if it's a phone call, if you meet him somewhere neutral, if you can do that and be strong, but I think you really have to be adamant and tell him that it can't happen anymore, that you're, you know, that you're seeing somebody else, that it can no longer happen, and then you just have to be strong. And I think that 
you have to get out there and start dating again because you know how these obsessions are like if you and especially on your part that when we start getting out there again and dating we meet someone else and it'll be less intense for you and i know it's hard to find men especially a man who can go all day with those abs <laughs> right. and you know, okay. 19 but i really mm-hmm. think that I, I i'm just nervous i mean i could see him being a little obsessed i get it these things happen i think there's like movies about this and so yeah. I think you have to be strong. You have to be adamant, have a plan, and tell him you can't come over. And you got to be like, because you're the age of his mom. So I think you got to use your mom tone and say, it can't happen again. We're not doing this. I need you to go find someone else on your own. You can't leave anything open. You can't even leave a possibility. And you can even say, I have an alarm system up and you can't come on my property. I know that's intense, but I feel like you're going to have to do something like that because he will just show up. Yep. Well, thank you, Emily. Um, you yeah, you're so that. welcome. Let me know how it goes. Of course. I'm, I'm, I'm invested in this now. You got to let me know what happens, Sonia. Thank you for calling. Okay, this one came to us from a Lori who is 31 in Illinois. She writes, Hi, Emily. My husband listens to your show daily. He often comes home and discusses the segments. He heard you talk about how masturbating can really help your overall health. I also suffer from anxiety, and you had talked about how it can help relieve that as well. I'm not opposed to masturbation and do it during sex with my husband and find pleasure in doing so. However, I have a hard time enjoying it when I'm alone. I want to, and I try to focus entirely on just pleasing myself, but I can't get into it. I've tried with different toys and watching porn, but just can't get into it alone. Do you have any advice on how I can? Yes, Lori. I can help you. I can help everyone. Thank you for this email, Lori, because this... This makes total sense that when you're with your husband, it works, you're masturbating, you're having a good sex life. Um, But when you're alone, you're like, well, what do I do? Like, where do I think? Where do I go? Not everybody naturally thinks about fantasies. So here's how it can work with sex. And here's some other things that might work for you for masturbation. Because again, I like to give you all options. I like to give you ideas. And then you create, you know, you make it your own. So for some people, fantasy might be the way. For other people, it could be breath. But I want to go back to one thing here, though, Lori. I love that your husband um, comes back and talks about the segments. And I have to say that there's a lot of couples who have found listening to the show together has been really helpful for their relationship. Because you all know that, like, talking to your partner about sex isn't always easy. So if I'm saying it, you can be like, what do you think about that, babe? She's saying that masturbating is actually good for you. You think it's something you want to try? Or whatever. Or Emily thinks that we should try, you know. I wouldn't think you have to, but you could try it if you want. Or Emily thinks it might be nice to take a gander down anal lane. So, um, okay. So Bring here's a, a few things I want you to know. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So when you're out of bed, this is my first thing is about just the whole umbrella fantasy. Think about when you're out of bed, because we don't want to get into bed and have to think about once we get into bed or wherever we're masturbating. Okay, now let me conjure up all these sexual fantasies. It just feels like another thing. Another friggin' thing. You're like, I, you already got me in bed to masturbate, Emily. I've already got my toy out, my lube, and now you want me to come up with some elaborate erotic fantasy? How dare I'm you? I'm done. How dare I'm you? I'm turning on Netflix. <laughs> I'm going back on Instagram. Fuck you. So when you're out of bed, think about things that spark your sexual arousal so it could be a past sexual experience that you've had and you could like jot these things down it could and you'll also remember if it's a second you might just mm-hmm. remember but it's helpful to like um something or someone you desire maybe you just saw someone who was super sexy or you met someone at a party this weekend or a time for you Lori, when your husband like think about the your most memorable times you had sex or the times that you saw him and you felt really turned on and like write those down or when you're driving in the car you could start to think about these scenarios it could also be a scene in a movie it could be something that you've read and the other thing is if you're just overwhelmed with everything like i said hone in on something that's already happened like if it's already happened to you use that and you can also build on it you could be like like in talking to my niece she was like i don't want to think about this guy though because he's just from the past i said well if the sex was good with him you could think about his body and another guy's head and then another you know like it's like it doesn't Mm -hmm. there are no rules to fantasy it's truly about finding what's going to spark that for you so you know finding other erotica you know writing down your fantasies moment with your partners that were hot and then so that's the fantasy route which for many people that's like a pre could be a pre-masturbation thing or right when you get in bed when you start touching yourself you kind of use it for a warm-up um things that have turned you on in the past well, how I traditionally now, I would say I'm more of a in the moment masturbator where I'm like in my breath, I'm focusing on all of my senses. Um, 
I'm focusing on my breath. I'm lighting a candle. I'm feeling, because orgasm and sex, a lot of you write in that you're in your head and you're anxious, which is exactly what Lori's talking about. She's like, how the hell do I get out of my head? Like, if you leave me alone in my bed with a vibrator, I'm just gonna be thinking about my to-do list because that's what I'm doing all the other times of life. So if you could maybe start with a little fantasy, maybe you start thinking about the candle that you're, you've lit, right? So that's your scent. Maybe you're tasting something that you just ate your dinner or the chocolate you just had. And then really you focus on your breath. You're literally, you're breathing in and you're breathing out and you're moving it through your body and you're just relaxing and you're focusing on what you feel and touch. So how do your hands feel on your body? You don't have to go right for your clitoris. You can just start lightly, you know, put some lube or some woo more play, the massage oil on your fingertips and just start thinking, getting curious And when your mind wanders, just be like, what am I feeling? Breathe. Oh, my hands on my left nipple. What does that feel like? My hands moving down my inner thigh. And then you're just breathing and you're feeling and you're focusing and you're present. And then if you're using a toy, which is awesome, (laughs) how does this vibration feel? How does this one feel? And then you start moving it down and over your body. Because you realize that when we are feeling anxious and we are out of our head, we're not in the moment. But when you engage the five senses, which is smell, touch. Se- yeah, what are you hearing? Sometimes I just focus on what I'm hearing is my breath. Mm. But sometimes I'll focus on music if music is playing. So it's what are you tasting, seeing. Maybe you're watching your your belly rise with your breath. So you're watching your hands move over your body, smelling the candle. But what I found when I'm anxious, even if I'm driving in the car, you guys, this is how you get yourself you know, back into the moment. If your head's tripping, I'm like, hand on the steering wheels. I'm listening to music. I taste my gum. I'm listening to the the sound on the radio. And then you're in the moment. And then all your thoughts, which were probably distracting you and not really necessary at that moment, will bring you back to the present moment. And like having a ritual, like my pre-sex or pre-masturbation ritual as well is like, like I said, lighting the candle, getting my toy out, putting my phone away, Lock, you know, locking the door, doing the things that I'm like, okay, I'm in my masturbation space, like my masturbation towel. Or oh, so make it like part of like your morning routine, make your masturbation routine exactly. like a thing that you do to get right. ready. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Have all of your things nearby. I think it's just to th- or, or re- be reading your own erotica. I mean, I'll never forget the listener. He was like, he wrote down erotica from his relationship of what he wanted his wife to do and what had turned him on in the past. And she read it and then she started doing those things and found out what turned her on as well. And like for me, yeah, it'll be like if I'm with someone, I don't know, I feel like sometimes I have more of the romantic fantasies. Like I'll be thinking about when That's I'm with someone nice. when we in bed or kissing and then I'll think about usually it's oral sex. So would you with say- a woman, with a man going down on me usually it's people pleasing me yes in my course. fantasies mm-hmm. yeah would you say though that do you fantasize actually more when you do have a partner or when you don't have a partner i would say that when i have a partner and it's new i fantasize about them mm-hmm. at the beginning and then i think i mostly in my life have gone through periods of fantasy it depends on the day fantasy and just breath so i would say it doesn't fluctuate with partner but at different times in my life i've been more like i'll remembering things from the past or i'll have a string of memories of like oh these are all the the times these guys are going down on me or or we were having sex in this bed or like i think all the you know what i mean it's like a medley like the best of yeah and it changes at different times yeah. In my life. I like to have a lot of different things to go to. Or I'll watch ethical porn from Balesa if I have to watch any porn. Yeah. Well, because it's like it's more than just like a two second thing. It's like you know how they got there. Yeah. There's like a plot. A little bit plot. Not yeah, too much of a not plot. Not enough to like. But it's it's good. when I feel like the plot gives you enough time to get into your mode to get ready for the action. If that makes sense. Right. Exactly. And there's like even just a minute of like. A little bit extra dialogue i don't know yeah i know and it's like not like it's so unrealistic but you're like oh they met he was her ski instructor that's i just keep going back to that one i saw when oh that was a good one i know they're in the middle of the snow yeah yes and she's like the ski instructor and her friend's like you should go out with him she's like really yeah they're like I in switzerland or something too. i know it was really hot and they're like wearing their cute little ski outfits and he's been teaching all day and then she makes him dinner and we want a little substance a little a little bit of plot a little substance in our porn just a little that's just for us Okay, thanks for your question, Lori. That's it for today's episode. 
Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Be sure to like, subscribe, and give us a review wherever you listen to podcasts and share this with a friend or a partner. Believe me, if you got something out of this, they will too. We release two to three episodes a week. Find me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. It's all at Sex with Emily. If you want to ask me a question about sex, dating, or relationships, you can email me feedback at sexwithemily.com or sexwithemily.com slash askemily. And check out my website. We have so many articles on there helping you better sex. And you can check out our guides at sexwithemily.com slash guides for free guides that will give you expansive tips and activities. Sign up for our weekly emails because, hey, I've been told I give really good emails. Was it good for you? Email me feedback at sexwithemily.com. Emily.com.